Hello and welcome to the Tuesday Night Music Show with Howie. Hello. And Jay. Hey, everybody. We got a little long winded last night. By the way, last night was six months ago, probably by the time you're watching this broadcast. Yeah, yeah. We were doing the live seminar thing on DJ and TV with John Young. Jane and I went on last and we were talking about wedding tips. And one area that John wanted to cover that we didn't have time for was music at weddings. Things for mm -hmm. 2022. So I thought for the first part of our show, we'd at least throw a few tips out there for anybody watching, maybe some helpful hints, some, some things to think about when you're out doing your weddings this season. Yes. What do you say, guys? Sound like a cool idea? Sounds good to me. Sounds good to me. Um, but since it was your show, I'll defer to you guys on that. Well, you're a DJ too, and it would be great if you could contribute something here and there. I'm sure, well, this, sure. this stuff will, will sound like it's sure. in your wheelhouse. You've done a okay. wedding or two, so that's why you're here. Two, well, you're here because you're our friend, but yeah. yeah no. you're, you're part of the panel tonight too, so don't worry. All righty. So I think it would be difficult to talk about hot songs. I mean, I guess we could, you know. Whatever but, realm of it you'd like to. There's a yeah. lot in weddings. So there's a lot of music yeah. at weddings. A lot of air. It's always changing and every event is different. So I was kind of yes. thinking about talking this more in the abstract. I thought that might be the way mm -hmm. to go. Mm -hmm. And one thing I was going to mention, and it may not be something for necessarily 22 for a lot of you, but I mean, I've been doing it for a while. I was doing it before I had a name for it. And it's the concept of talking your client into what Mike Sanchez calls family hour. Mm -hmm. I'll walk you through it. Let's say your client wants to do an all sublime wedding. Mm -hmm. Now Jay's shaking his head because he's had these people before. Yep. And they don't really understand that maybe another uh, part of their audience may want to hear something other than sublime. I have these weddings coming up. Yes. So, so the way that you can do this and make it work, I've done it before and it works pretty well, is suggest to the client to do something. You just call it family hour and they'll say, what's that? And then you come back and say, well, for the first hour, you just kind of play a mix of music for everybody. Your, your little cousin, your grandma, your parents, Whatever, just all kinds of stuff, a variety of music for the first hour. And then after that, we can have an evening with Sublime. That way, everybody gets a little mm -hmm. something. Sure. And most, most of the time, they'll reluctantly be like, okay, yeah, whatever, just do that. What I found is they like the family hour so much, they want it to keep going. Right. You're out there doing the right variety of music. They're like, hey, just keep this mm -hmm. up. This is amazing. My grandma's dancing. I didn't expect this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My mom is smiling. My dad is smiling. Just keep doing this. Yeah. It doesn't mean that you don't play sublime that night. It just means that you're able to pull a successful event off where people actually stick around. 100%. Mm -hmm. I, I think the other issue becomes, and I'm fighting this week after week after week with, I don't want the typical wedding music. Mm -hmm. And I used to really sell myself up till about a year ago. I really sold myself on the like, I'm not going to play the typical wedding music. And we all know we could list 10 songs that we consider to be typical wedding that you're going to hear at sure. every wedding. Sure. And mm -hmm. I would sell it as, I want your wedding to be special. I want it to be great. I want it to stand out because I know when your guests go to the next three weddings, they're going to hear pretty much a lot of the same songs. Right. And I understand. And I don't want them to hear those here unless you want those. And they would say like, what do you mean? I'm like, Sometimes shout, sometimes brick cow, sometimes play that funky music, white boy. It, right. It's even become uptown funk a little bit to some people. For right. sure. But Damn. I always put a huge comma, capital letters, but it's imperative I play the songs that your guests know. So the yeah, game you becomes yeah. your guests are going to eat hamburgers and hot dogs. <laughs> I'm going to make this crazy new version of a hamburger with cheese inside and it'll get compared to other cheeseburgers. And they go, oh, we get what you're saying. 
So I might play Uptown Funk, but I know what most DJs might mix into it. And that's where you try to break it up. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I've famously told the Little John Turn Down For What into Luke Bryan Country Girl Shake That For Me because I get a lot of the country hip hop weddings. And that mm -hmm. kills every time because it hits them out of nowhere. You know, it's that taking two things that make sense but don't really make sense together till they do. Mm -hmm. So I love when you first brought the family hour up, I love that. And I've brought that up I to some of my clients and said, yeah. you're doing a lot of house, let's do this. How about we do the first family hour? And the first family hour will refer to, I play the bangers. I start yeah. slow, I build up, and it's song after song after song they know. Right. It's the Michael Jackson, it's the Uptown Funk, it's sure. the Play That Funky Music White Boy. It's, but I do it in a quick, rapid succession. I mix in some stuff that they didn't expect, and boom. Then we can go into your stuff. And just like you've seen, Brian, they've kind of I've gone up to the clients, been like, okay, you want me to switch it over to that house set? They're like, oh, no, just keep going with this. Right, this is good. Because they, they start to good. realize yeah. they're having this great time. The other thing that I think is important to mention, and this happened this past Saturday, um, I'll name three artists, Doja Cat, Sweetie, and... Dua Lipa. It, no, I'll name four then, because Dua Lipa was in there too, and SZA. Yeah. Those are four artists mm -hmm. that I played during cocktail. The client said, our group is 30 to 50, do whatever you want for cocktail. And I tried to play, I played Shanice, I like your smile, I played Desiree. I like your I, smile. Yeah, I played- I love your these, smile. I love your smile. Mm -hmm. love I played the 90s stuff, I played some early 2000. And then I played a Justin Bieber Peaches, and I noticed I got a real good response from people kind of bopping their head. And I'm like, mm. you know, let me do Sweetie's track. Let me do Levitate. Let me do this. Because mm -hmm. they're right. slow enough. They're like under 110 BPM. So they're not really that dancey yet. Mm -hmm. But it was a shocking. Even the bride and groom during dinner were like, um, I'm like, how's it going? They're like, okay, we've had like 10 people come up and say that was the best cocktail music they've ever heard. I'm like, oh, that's so good to hear. Like, I really appreciate that. But, you know, we talked. Like I told you, right. the vision was, let's have them have a good time. So don't be afraid of the family hour as a DJ, because you can get tricky during cocktail now. That's not what it used to be. I mean, yeah. Brian, you've been mm -hmm. in the game longer than me. You must remember the days of, oh, it's cocktail hour. Let me hit play on this Louis Armstrong song and just let it go for an hour. Oh, yeah. An evening with Kenny G or the Wyndham exactly. Hill sampler yeah, or yeah, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Wyndham Hill and yeah, <laughs> higher octave and yeah. David it's, Sanborn, whatever. Yep, yeah, just it's all that. changed. And it was an LP. You just put the LP on and it's let it roll. Yeah. But, you know, it's interesting what you were saying about, and, and, and we all get it. Sometimes the client says, look, we don't want any of those songs. You know, we don't want to hear this, 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 and this. I did a video on this re relatively recently where I was talking about what that meant. Because sometimes you'll see a list of songs. And, and you know, granted, they are songs that you hear at a lot of weddings. And they are songs that motivate people. But it's a long list of those songs. And you think, well, did they just hate these songs? I don't believe they always do. I believe that what that list actually is saying is that they don't want it to sound like every other wedding they've been to for the last five years. Exactly. So yeah. do something different. And it's about trust with your client, I guess, where, I mean, if you're going to do kind of a weirdo evening of songs and play things that people aren't used to hearing and maybe sneak uptown funk in there somewhere, maybe it doesn't necessarily need to be on the don't playlist. Maybe you could get away with that. But if you can assure them that mm -hmm. they're not going to hear it's not going to sound like every other wedding they've been to because, quite frankly, a lot of times this gets formulated. Right. A lot of DJs get really, they find something that works and they just they keep stick doing to it. it. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen I'm DJs yeah. post their playlist from weddings on their website. They'll literally blog every wedding and they'll post the entire playlist. And I've gone on because they've said, I just started mm -hmm. doing this. Tell me what you think. And after reading five straight weddings, I'm like, you know, I didn't, I didn't actually cut and paste anything. But I got to tell you, it almost looks like, and before I could finish the sentence, he goes, I play pretty much the exact same songs at every wedding. You know yeah. why? They work. Mm -hmm. So in most jobs, if it works, you do it repeatedly. Yeah. But we don't have that luxury, even though there's that top 200 list that comes out every mm -hmm. year from Mobile Beat, DJ yeah, Intelligence, DJ Intelligence, this is this. Right. 
we both know if I showed up with those 200 songs for a dancing section of the night, I could probably do really well. Oh, you do really well. Oh, sure. But, you, you would do very well. And, and the thing is, if I was a multi-op making 500 bucks <laughs> a wedding, doing 100 weddings a year, I might, I might say to my guys, here, when in doubt, you know, because we all remember the Platinum Series. We remember sure. the movie Top 400. Sure. 40, we, right. we did events on them. 40 discs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Because of, they worked. I, I was doing events on the original. Uh, well, this, I think before you were probably DJing, but they had the DJ Tool CDs. One through ten. I never used them, but I remember them. Yeah, yeah. Those those were the first ones that I was aware of. They came out probably in the well. The first time I saw DJ Tools Volume One, I, I bet you it was nineteen ninety one. I mean, it goes way back. Yeah, that's that's before I got in the game. But I mean, mine was the top four hundred from mm -hmm. Mobile Beat. Yeah, and I think yeah, it was, was like twenty four CDs. Sure, know? and that was late nineties, early two thousands. Yes, and shortly before that is when the Platinum series came out, which is really right. solid, by the way. And I've seen the Platinum series. Mm -hmm. Somebody had it, and they gave it to me to use, uh, and I didn't have a burner, even though that uh, would be wrong and illegal. I didn't have one, but man, yeah. I got to tell you, after using them, I was like, "How much?" And I think they were selling right. for four hundred dollars. That ain't bad. I mean, if you look back, no, at that's I mean, what's illegal. Or, or what back, not? Yeah. Right, but I mean, this was the days of DJs were getting five hundred, six hundred bucks, you know, for a big gig. That was, you know, in hindsight, I should have just bought it probably because you could probably still use them up to that year now. Sure. But I think it speaks to clients. I don't know I, where they're going. That's the secret that we need to find out. Right. And My it, bride for this Saturday is like, I don't want typical wedding music. Cha-cha slide, Cupid shuffle, wobble. Where is she going? Right. Those it, songs it, yeah. become typical. I had a wedding. It had to be a wedding. Whatever it was two weeks ago or we, whatever it was. The last wedding I did. It was on the second, which I guess, yeah, two, three weeks ago, whatever it was. Yeah, a couple weeks back. And I had it in my head that I really wanted to do something unique. So I started the night off very different. And I actually give my playlist in a video. I take it song by song and what the response to the songs were. I started it out different. They wanted to kick the evening off with a fast song, which was their first song. Still the one Orleans. On their request list. There were a lot of songs, but one that stuck out to me was Red Bones, Come and Get Your Love. And in my brain, I'm thinking, okay, if the vibe is 70s, and I put this on next, instead of maybe what I would normally put on, that would be like a warm-up song. And typically, you're doing a slow song for the first song, then you play something very familiar for the second song, they stay out there and dance. Your first dance song is something everybody knows. Right. I decided to go to the request list and just give it a try. I regret that. And, and I was really trying to be cool and unique and different, but I should have yeah. just, I guess. Trust your instinct. Maybe trusted my instincts a little better and, yeah. and gone ahead and done those tried and true songs just to warm them up. And then we could have gotten goofy with three quests this later. It probably would have been more appropriate that way. So, yeah, I, I guess my point of even bringing this up is play to your audience, pay attention to them. In the crowd. Yeah. I, I play read the crowd sounds like voodoo and and i know what you mean right but I, that's why i say re read the room i, I was gonna say or, yeah i've told this to toasters who said like yeah. Yeah, i got this toast like six pages long i'm like read the room and i took it from your friend and mine uh mr stern who mentioned his daughter i think had to give a toast yeah. at a wedding and he's like yeah talk for like a minute minute and a half he's like read the room know the yeah. room don't be rambling up there. That's not going to help you or anyone else. Just right. You got a room. You can tell when you're losing them. Get yeah. out. Right. Yeah. And it, just... The time frame isn't very long. Mm -hmm. I had to. I had to beg my clients for this weekend, by the way, because I'm sure. I don't know if you see this in your market, but my market for the last man, I I would have to say a good ten years has been. Yeah, we don't want to do the whole first dance. I mean, I got married 22 years ago. I did all four minutes and 18 seconds of final acclaim by Rod right. Stewart. And halfway, not even halfway through, I was like, I can't believe we're going to be out here for another two minutes. And my wife's like, what do you mean? I go, song's got like two and a half minutes left. I know the song. Trust well, me. Well, it, it pops up occasionally. And it pops up one of two things. Either the groom just doesn't like to dance. Right. Or it's Almost for always. like father-daughter dance. Right. And, mm -hmm. you know, dad is maybe a person like myself who has a disability. We don't want to keep dad up there for too long. So give yeah. him verse, chorus, and then invite everybody else out. And he can just 
go away right. and no one will notice. That, well, that's and, when it comes up. Sure. Out here it goes, traditionally, a lot of weddings, the majority of my weddings go first dance, father, daughter, mother, son. So when they'll come to me and say, hey, what do you think about doing first dance and inviting everyone out? I'm like, do you want to wait on father, daughter, mother, son? Because they're scheduled right afterwards. So it'll be awkward to have everyone come out, then kick everyone off and then come back mm-hmm. out with. So why don't we do this? We'll go like a minute and a half, two minutes on each song. And you're right. A lot of times it's a parent might be elderly, have a disability, have an issue. Sure. They just don't mm-hmm. want to dance. So I fell into the, well, how do I combat this before it becomes a problem? So the first dance is always personal. And I always say, by the way, understand I can cut it wherever we want. Oh, right. okay, great. Mm-hmm. Father, daughter, mother, son, if that's on the edge, I've recommended like Beatles in my life, 205, you know, wonderful world, Louis Armstrong, 210. For the mother, son, um, a lot of times you get moms that are Beatles fan. If the groom is in a certain age graph bracket and I'll say, Hey, let's try this. Ben folds the acoustic golden slumbers from I am Sam. It's a minute 45 and they hear it and go, this is perfect. My mom loves the Beatles. This will yeah. be special. And it's short. Cause you don't want those 10 minute songs. You know, they just they yeah. benefit you. I'll have that sometimes. So they'll, I mean, I don't know if you guys have ever experienced this or not, but the one, I don't know, for instance, just off the top of my head, can't help falling in love with you, Elvis Presley. That's a short song, you know, mm-hmm. and then they'll, they'll want Bless the Broken Road or whatever. Oh, I loved her first yeah. Rascal Flats. That's like, yeah. you know, almost five minutes long. It's like, do you realize Bless that, the Broken Road yeah. that or, or yeah. I loved her first? Do you realize the father daughter yeah, song is like five minutes long and your song for your mom is like a minute, like 58? You Are you okay up. with that? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you literally and, end up matching tracks up. Like, here you go. Let's do this. I had um, years ago, I had somebody want to do Olivia Newton John father daughter dance. Mm. I honestly love you. Yeah. She goes, Please stop at two minutes and 37 seconds. Cause at two minutes and 38 seconds, she says, and when we make love, and I prefer yeah. not to have that. <laughs> but I have the yeah. same issue with Tim McGraw, my little girl, because he gets to the bridge and he goes, you know, he'll be a man like me, blah, blah, blah. And he won't be worthy and he won't be good. Like he goes into this like thing about how bad the groom is. And I'm like, oh, let's. Right. So I always say to him, that's a great choice. Let's make sure we get out around 210, though. Yeah. Because it starts to go way downhill for your husband at that point. So, Howie, when, when you're doing your events, I have a question for you. Sure. Uh, Jay brought it up and I hadn't really thought about it. Years ago, years ago, when there was a uh, father daughter dance, or is was always a thing, but mother son is relatively new. Mm-hmm. I mean, as, as mainstream. Mm-hmm. But back in the old days, we just kind of put it somewhere else in the evening. We would do the right. first dance, right. then start playing songs, and then maybe an hour and a half in or two hours in or whatever, you do the. Yeah. Uh, the father daughter dance. Do you do the father daughter dance, mother son immediately after the first dance? Not always. Um, I try to, I try to encourage them to do what we did in the old days. Like you mentioned only because, Hey, these people have been dancing for 45 minutes to an hour. It's an easy way. Instead of saying, Oh, put a slow song on, (sighs) give them a break. You give them a break and yeah. then do that particular thing. And it's, you know, it's nice. It, you know, they, everybody gets the break they need. They can go sit down or go to the bar, whatever. Sure. Yeah. It really yeah. kind of depends on, I think the evening you're having, because mm-hmm. I agree. Sometimes the audience needs the break. They other do. times, other times I find it disruptive to keep stopping and starting. It just kind of, I think those um, are options. Though. I don't. I don't know that stopping and starting, if, if they've been dancing an hour, is stopping and starting. Though, I mean, that's that's a, a pretty long time when you figure that the average age of the relatives and and extended guests is forty and up. Perhaps that's the key. Perhaps right. the key is if you got an older crowd. Yeah. Maybe you do these. You break it up a little more. But if you have a younger yeah. crowd, momentum is everything. Oh, right. well, sure. Because they've got sure. better options. Sure. sure. They don't have sure. to stay there. I remember mm-hmm. doing parties back when, I mean, I, I got to just say, clubs aren't what they used to be. 
People don't go to clubs anymore. You don't go somewhere to be seen anymore. It's different with social media now and little bars and stuff. Yeah, yeah but, it really is. But there was a time when it was like, God, why am I sitting here at this stupid wedding when I could, you know, go downtown and hit the club? Right. And people were thinking this in their heads. I knew what they were thinking because I was thinking the same thing. I can't wait to get out of here because I can pack up and hit the club for closes. Right. Well, so, you, you've got two points, and I want to I want to address both very quickly. One, okay. the majority of my weddings, and I did this at mine. And again, understand, I'm talking something that happened in 2000. At least in my area in the West Coast, Southern California, it's traditionally things are done together, and it comes down a lot to the timing. Yeah. So what I've sold people on, if possible, is let's do your grand entrance and go into your first dance and then have you take your seat. We can have dinner, do your toast. Then we can come back and do father, daughter, mother, son. Now, one of the huge variables that's involved with weddings is time. It's also other vendors. So let's say you have a photographer that shows up at noon with an mm -hmm. eight hour package and the wedding ends at 10. Well, if the ceremony starts at four, they do cocktail 4.30 to 5.30, quarter of six, they sit down. Mm -hmm for dinner they have some turn 30 you need to get photos for those events mm -hmm. so a lot of times i will make the recommendation <laughs> you know what you're going to do anniversary father daughter mother son honeymoon dance garter bouquet the shoe game you've got a lot of things going on right. here are your choices mm -hmm. where are the guests from are they all out of town yes We've got like 20 people from local, 100 from out of town. Okay, that dynamic means you need to spend time with them. Yeah. So I think it's important to do things in groups of three. I try not to do four. I think four is boring and self-serving. I think long. first dance, father, daughter, mother, son, dance for uh, half an hour, cake yeah. cutting, anniversary, honeymoon, dance for 20 minutes, garter bouquet, shoe game, be done. I know it's a start and stop mentality, but if you were to pile all the, and I did this at a venue recently where they gave me a schedule and the bride and groom hadn't okayed it. And the schedule was toast, first dance, father, daughter, mother, son, anniversary, honeymoon, garter bouquet, shoe game, and something else. And I looked at the bride and groom, I go, you're done eating around 730. Your group isn't scheduled to dance till almost quarter of nine. Is this what you guys want? No, we don't want that. I go, tell the coordinator we're going to switch gears. The cake's already baked. It's not going anywhere. I'm on the mic telling people what to do. So I think a lot of, you know, dance for an hour and a half and stop to do something slow makes sense. But where I come in on that, Brian, is I would use the anniversary dance for that. Yeah. I would rather get the special dances done. And the other, the other thing you have to address is lighting. If I've got a wedding that ends at 10 or 11, and we're done eating at 6.30, quarter of seven, that first dance father down my son, that's kind of at a dusky time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Versus if I come back at 8.30 to do the father, daughter, mother, son yeah. dance, it's pitch black. And the other night, my photographer walked out at 8.15, have a great night, gone. Well, just, just a quick... Uh, so it, I think that the logistics answer some of the questions. Right. And, and just, right. just a reminder to anybody who's watching, you know, Jay is in a very different market than I'm in. And my right. structure looks nothing like his structure. And it yeah. doesn't mean his structure is wrong. No, it just nor, means, nor does it make yours wrong right. either. It, no, it, but it, I, yeah. I, yeah, I've experienced what Jay is talking about, though. If the photographer is going at eight, sometimes yeah. you had to do a bunch of stuff, you know, that they they want done before he leaves. And that's and even a question. Stuck, you have to say to stuck. a bride, what do you, how, you know, I say, this is all pre-wedding yeah. for me, where I say, how important are these photographs? Because anniversary, garter bouquet, honeymoon, those are things that aren't traditionally done early. So if you don't need them caught by photo, we can do them later. My wedding Saturday night, the bride was doing mm -hmm. anniversary, honeymoon, and bouquet. She canceled the anniversary. She canceled the honeymoon. Mm -hmm. And she did do the bouquet just as the photographer was getting ready to leave. That's an that's an adjustment you have to make. And that's you know, fine. Years ago, I mean, I always kind of knew, okay, the photographer is leaving at nine. So I have to get everything done by nine. I knew this. Like mm -hmm. when I was there, I was prepared to do it and I made it happen. Right. But Jay, years ago, years ago, on the phone, just talking, had mentioned this was a selling point where he would say to the potential client, 
just what time is your photographer leave? Oh, if they leave at eight, I will make sure everything is done yeah. before the photographer leaves. It's important to you. Yes. I never thought of even mentioning it as a selling point. Yeah. I did it, but I didn't, you, you know, know it, when, it, the man behind the curtain thing. I don't, you know, tell right, them everything. But some, right. something <laughs> as simple as this. You're on the phone with somebody. If you're at home with the computer or even on your phone, whatever the date of their wedding, if you have an inquiry for the date of their wedding, talk, when once you get them on the phone, email, whatever, and you start to talk about timing, you should already know what time sunset is that day. And you should say to them, because it's mm. in my timeline. Yeah, I, I shot the video 10 years ago on YouTube that shows my timeline. One of the things is I put in it bride and groom to take sunset photos. Now you can say, well, they're not on the beach, Jay. Where's the sunset? Well, the sun changes the color of the sky. Everyone they, knows sunset is a photo. Yeah. Photographers call that magic hour. Magic hour, golden hour. Yeah. I want yeah. them to understand as the DJ, my concern is not just, hey, you know, I can wiki mm -hmm. wiki up here. I'm kind of a big deal with Pioneer. No, I want you to know that I'm on your side for the entire event. And if right. you get a beautiful sunset photo, right. you're going to think mm -hmm. six months down the road, oh my God, that photo is so beautiful. Remember Jay pointed out, we should make sure we take this. Oh my God. Yeah. I, I, and like, then the other, with, with Jay, it's also probably important to just know that he's usually doing outdoor events. A hundred percent. I have two yeah. events this year out of 60, right. two events this year out of 60 that are outdoor or that Most, are indoors, yeah. indoor in a, inside of a hotel. Only unless two. It, unless the other it 58 rains. are outside. Yeah. yeah. Most, most every event that I do is indoors. Most every event. Yeah. Most, I mean, um, yeah, most of mine too. Yeah, yeah. That, so that's and, just and something. By the way, we, we get we here. get sunset here on the east coast too. No, 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 yeah. and that's my point, Howie. Is <laughs> explaining if you know that this is going to happen at a certain yeah. time. If they're like, yeah, the yes. wedding is five to midnight. Beautiful mm -hmm. ceremonies at five, and we're going to do cocktail at five thirty, and we're going to do this, this, and this. Hey. You know, just make sure I want to make sure you're, you know, your photo is probably going to want to take you out front because it's a beautiful spot for sunset. Right. Oh, we, and here's another one I did the other night because it was a full moon. I look up when the full moon is and I tell my clients, hey, check out this photo of Jody, who I'm working with that night. Have you seen her full moon photo? No. Oh, my God. We love that. You know, there's a full moon the day before your wedding. So you'll get that kind of remnant light. You should mm -hmm. totally make sure you mention we want that photo. These are parts of the memory process, the mm -hmm. memory of a special day where 10, 12, 20 mm -hmm. years later, you're still an active part of that event. And Jay's I think got a that's, lot of, yeah. you know, that's Jay's important. Got, he's always got a lot of really good ideas on, on selling points, you know, sure. like uh, Thank you. unique selling points, uh, USP, I believe they call them or something like that. I don't know, but you, you always do well with that. You do real well mm -hmm. with like taking something that, you know, I always did like just kind of knowing I need to get all the photos done before nine o'clock because the photographer was leaving to make that a selling point that you yeah. are going to make sure that that happens for them and you're mm -hmm. going to schedule things as such. Well, That's and it's not a detriment to other DJs that don't, but it becomes that edge of we've talked to four DJs and only Jay was concerned with sunset and making sure we got everything <laughs> so taken care of. It. Right. But they all may the very thing. well be just as concerned with it, but because you mentioned it, they know you're concerned with it. Right. I mean, yeah. I, I think you and I have talked for, you know, the 18 years that we've known or 14 years we've known each Whatever other, it's, yeah. how I end up writing all these timelines and you and a lot of DJs have been like, why would you write a timeline? That's not your job. That's the coordinator. I'm like, because I want to know how much time I have on different areas oh, I always so I can promise it. or, you know, I want to over deliver everything. I want to sure. exceed expectations. Mm -hmm. If I only have a two or three hour dance floor, this is, you know, why tell them here's 700 songs to play? If I know cocktails only 30 minutes and yeah. their point is to make people feel loving, that's that's not a lot of songs. No, no. But it's, it's also about no. getting what uh, it's a big question. Really, what time is your photographer leaving? Yeah. Oh, they're leaving at eight o'clock. OK, well, your dinner yeah. is at seven. That's an issue. <laughs> yeah, we got a problem. And they Actually, suddenly go, you know, oh, my God, we never thought of that. You're spot on. That's the first vendor that I, I reach out to is the photographer. Yeah. And then when I meet them at the venue, I always go up to them and introduce myself and then say, hey, look, here's the timeline. But as you know, if you've done enough events, it's just a, 
order of things. It it's right. not exactly core. It's an outline. Seven. It's not rigid. Yeah. No. And I said, but I will promise you one thing. I will always give you a heads up 10 minutes ahead of time. And they go, really? And I said, yeah. And they were like, nobody does that. And I go, that's what I'm going to do for you. And whoa. They're like, you want to, you want to win a vendor? I never eat at my events. My I photography don't. team, video team always eat at the event. No. 90, a hundred percent of the time we do the toast towards the end of the meal. There's a very good likelihood that if the photography team, videography team didn't get in the line first, that they're somewhere away from the bride and groom eating because that's not a photo time. Yeah. I make it an absolute standard that before I tell the bride and groom we're ready to do the toast, I get the photo video team. I get probably a 2%, hey, thanks for doing that. <laughs> but I know what's going to happen when I don't. I tell you. I, and I know I, when I, they run in late and they go, oh, hey. I, I eat at everything and I eat at my DJ table. I I, you do, do you want to go you, sit somewhere? You, I'm like, no, I'm eating right no, no, here. No. And I have oh, yeah, no problem. I, I never go to the vendor table. If they bring it to me, I eat right at, at my booth. But normally I don't eat. Um, and if it's a really high end thing, I will actually offer the, uh, the client, Hey, look, I don't eat at the wedding, you know, at my events. So that's a vendor meal. You don't have to pay for Howie. That's it started real quick. I did a wedding about 15, 16 years ago, went in another room to eat. I knew the bride and groom really well. I'd given them a discount. So it wasn't like a real wedding wedding. Like, Oh, this is stressful. It was like, oh, these mm -hmm. are friends of mine. I'm doing them a favor. Went in the other room, came back, and there was no music. And I ran over, and I'm like, oh, oh. And yeah, the table next was. to me was <laughs> like, I'm like, how long ago did the music stop? They're like, eh, like 10, 15 minutes ago. So I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. So I went to the bride and I'm like, I'm so sorry. They're like, no, dude, don't worry about it. We were just chit-chat. We didn't even notice. Like, we knew you were out eating. How was the food? And it changed the subject. <laughs> so I told my wife. <laughs> She's like, so no one there is going to hire you. I'm like, well, no, it wasn't a big deal to the bride and groom or their friends. She's like, but as a professional DJ, your goal, your job. Michelle, was Michelle's going to kick your butt on all that stuff. Right. But you, you know what? But, but honestly, it made perfect sense. Yeah. Because yeah. It, when I stopped and thought about it, she's like, did you really need to sit in the other room and eat? And I don't know about you guys. No. And it is what it is for me personally. But man, when I'm excited about something, food gets in the way. It's just yeah. for me personally. Yeah. And to yeah. Howie's comment, I used, when we were cheaper back in the day, I would tell clients, by the way, you don't have, you know, I don't eat at your events, so you don't have to pay for a vendor meal. So if you're comparing me and Howie and he's, you know, X and I'm Y, understand if he eats, that Y goes up. Like that price goes up because he's eating, you got to pay. You know, I mean, it, it sounds stupid to a lot of DJs and I have no issue with people eating. I just personally, for my performance. No, that's all good. I want I, I understand why. I want to run around. And by the way, <clears throat> oddly enough, I never, ever, ever, ever have this at an event where I'm being water. Paid. Yes. I only water. drink water. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just a standard. And I tell people no, no. I have nothing to drink before or during. And for some of my clients in California, I've actually had to say to them, by the way, I don't partake in anything that might be legal in this state but may affect my performance. Well, I, pay, I survive yeah. and pay the bills for my beautiful wife and two beautiful boys on me DJing your event. I need mm -hmm. this six months, a year later to have somebody say, yeah, we just got engaged. We need to hire your DJ. I wanted to take a few minutes before we get uh, too deep into that to, <laughs> before the show's over is just talk about communication with the audience. I thought it was an interesting subject to think about okay. just because we all know that you can communicate with a microphone and you can even communicate by, you know, walking up to somebody and talking to them. That's communication. Mm -hmm. Effectively uh, communicating with your audience uh, is not limited to your, you know, speaking. You can also communicate to the audience with lighting. That's how he knows. This is mm -hmm. how we think. Yep. Mm -hmm. You can tell them when it's time to get excited by the, by, by the lights that he's turning on. Mm -hmm. You can communicate with your music sets. Yep. Mm -hmm. you, there, there's so when I don't know, I'm thinking about communication with my audience. It's not always verbal. Sometimes it's right. these other things. 
Yep. Sometimes it's just eye contact with the people dancing and looking and going, oh, ooh, like that. If they look at you and go, ooh, because you just transitioned to a, a song that they love. Mm-hmm. You can point give at them. them. You give them well, the, the shout out. Song. Yeah. That's for you. Point. The points are amazing. If you give them that, like, yeah, yeah. I know you. No, I knew. Yeah. No, no. Right. It is. It's huge. It's huge. Yep. They'll go back to the table and say, yeah, the DJ pointed at me. You know, mm-hmm. well, you, know the other I, you see them out there, you can't hear them, but you know, they're telling like, this is the one I asked for. They're really yeah, excited, exactly. you know? Yeah. 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 Well, and the other thing is, sure. I've always maintained, I try my mm-hmm. best early on. I want to be friends with the wedding parties. Yeah. Oh, There's yeah. three, four, five, six mm-hmm. guys in the wedding party. Yeah. That means that accounts in my book for at least 12 people. Because mm-hmm. each of them has someone there with them. Right, right. They are in a suit. They are part of the wedding party. They are there to watch out for the bride and groom. If they are family, that adds numbers. So if you have 80, 90, and by the way, for what it's worth, guys, the biggest wedding right now on paper I have this year of 60 weddings, the biggest wedding I have this year is 140. The wedding I did over the weekend was 87. My wedding this Saturday, they've invited 80 guests. So if they all show up, it's 80. If they don't, it's going to be in the 70s. Weddings on the <laughs> West Coast have dropped number-wise. I haven't broken 200 people in probably five years. Now, How many people it, do, you, do you think I have at the wedding I just booked? Oh, I'm, in your area, I'm guessing 250. 80. Typically, in my area, the trend has been that attendance is smaller the, well the weddings are smaller the attendance is what it's supposed to be but the mm-hmm. last wedding i did i mean it was 85 people in a venue made for 100 Ooh. and that's pretty normal for me oh okay so you're in the same pretty, thing it, it's the same thing however however i did book one last week for 350 people i've done oh. that in like at least eight years Remember in, I told- in fact it was 375 yeah. i did eight years ago Jay, this, you win. Yeah. You win door number three. You won the grand prize because you didn't go over. Um, I guess eighty. So well, and but my point is this: you had eighty. I have eighty. If you've got a, a typical wedding party out here, is anywhere between four and six on each side. Yeah, that's about right. So if I get mm-hmm. four guys, and they've got a date or a wife mm-hmm. there, that's eight. So if I have eighty, I've now at least endeared myself to ten percent. Not mm-hmm. counting the families, mm-hmm. because a hundred percent of my weddings, thank goodness, I'm grateful for it. I get a mother or father that comes over and goes, "Are you Jay?" Yes. Oh, my daughter Ashley has talked about you. I can't believe you did this. I'm so excited about tonight. Mm-hmm. She loves you. She can't wait for this. And I'm like, thank you so much. I, I just want you to have the best possible wedding. Congratulations. So nice to meet you. And before mm-hmm. you know it. You've got 20, 30 people on your side. Well, guess what? If things start to go off the rails, you might need those 20 or 30 people who are on your side. Because they're going to know. That's why like Mm -hmm. when the wedding party comes back from photos during cocktail, I make a point of trying to play. If I see them move to a song, I change everything and go to keep going down that road because I want Mm -hmm. them on my side. Like, hey guys, jamming up. Oh, dude, love this. Oh, the groom's such down. Right. Now, I want on a, that for the night. On a side note, it, it was something that I was thinking about. When we were doing our seminar yesterday, we were talking about how the trend I have found is that we have these amateur wedding officiants for ceremony. Mm-hmm. And I had also mentioned that there are times when I will go in and offer... Uh, ceremony direction services where I'll get a wireless microphone and a speaker and I'll just kind of help coach people along because mm-hmm. the officiants never married anybody before the right. wedding party doesn't know what to do kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Now, as a byproduct of that, I've had the best receptions because of the relationships that I was able to develop with the wedding party 100%. during rehearsal. 100%. Just, just throwing it out there. it was That was mm-hmm. a great but it was a byproduct. I wasn't even thinking about it. But mm-hmm. when I when I got to the the first time I did it, when I got to rehearsal or to the to the uh, after the rehearsal, when I got to the ceremony the next day, it was like they're high fiving me. They're already my my people. 
They've got right. my back. Yeah, right. it was that's really nice. The key, that's the key expression, Brian. Is they have your back. Yes. If some random gets wasted and gets on one of their like oh, the <laughs> DJ this and that. You want? Oh no! Don't talk about time. Brian. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. But that's the thing. I did one rehearsal probably five, six years ago, mm-hmm. and it ended up being a wedding where the bride's mother said to me the night before, I happened to be at the venue for a meeting with a client and in walks my next day client for their rehearsal. The new client leaves. I go over and go, hey, how's it going? Oh my God, what's going on? What are you doing here? I'm like, I just had a meeting here with another client. You guys doing rehearsal? Do you guys, you know, I'm here. Like, I don't have an event tonight. Do you need anything? No, we're good. I meet the mother and the mother says, by the way, the bride's cousin has a beautiful voice. I go, oh, like for real or because you think so? And she kind of snickers. She goes, she's in a band. I go, oh, good for her. I go, what's the band? She goes, she's the lead singer of Lizzie Borden in the Axes. I'm like, oh my God, I've paid to see her because it's a <laughs> Boston bride. So yeah. I'm like, this is insane. So the beauty of it was I had Friday night now to go, oh, let me switch some of the music and hey, Robbie, we're recording a show right now. If you could just put your camera on pause or turn your camera off because we're recording the show right now, but we'll be done in a few minutes. And I move all this new Boston music over and I get three Lizzie Borden in the Axis songs and I meet up with her. And then during dinner, I'm dry because the bride said during dinner, play what you want. We just want some fun music. So I start playing some older Boston stuff. And the bride's cousin starts turning around, turning around, big smile, thumbs up. So during the event, at one point, I play this really upbeat song from her band and I hand her the mic and she's singing. And I was like, the bride's freaking out. Her family's flipping out. Everyone just, I still talk to her. Heather Rice um, Fahey is the singer of Lizzie Borden. We still talk once in a while on Facebook, but it's one of those things that, if, especially in a rehearsal like Brian did, if you can get in there earlier, if it works for your schedule, yeah, if and I, yeah. I made a suggestion right. that because I show up a couple hours early, I'm now going to say to clients because of Brian's rehearsal comment, I'm going to tell my clients, you know, your ceremony starts at four. I'm going to be there at two. Right. What time is your officiant who is your friend who's never done a wedding going to be there? Because I'd love to make 15 minutes time for him mm-hmm. to explain the pitfalls and make sure he's good to go. And I did it mm-hmm. last Saturday. The officiant's name is Stout. And he thanked me the entire night for some yeah. of the things I told you him. You know, all I'll say to them, because, and, and I'll leave this until later, when they'll, well, what time are you showing up? Like, well, actually, I'm going to come there early because I really want to be there for you for this ceremony Good. oh Good. thank you so much you were just we don't know i'm like mm-hmm. don't worry i got you i want to be there I have for a you question for you jay yes. when 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 you gave that mic to the lady to sing along did you give her a a singing microphone or yes no i, oh, gave her a singing a, microphone. Yeah. I did not give her a speaking <laughs> mic a dialogue we mic. know <laughs> and I, i've got a, i've got a gig tomorrow but i've got to figure out a way to get that video shot because even i'm over the fact that i haven't shot it yet that was driving yeah. me nuts I, I gave thinking, her an actual singing mic. Not I was thinking mic. about that last night. And if you missed the show, Jay, tell them. Tell them what you did. Just, just tell them. <laughs> so you'll see this video on YouTube, hopefully in the next day, even though this show won't air until November. But um, yeah, it's up now. I've yeah. had 100% of my clients don't want anyone to s- sing at their wedding. Yeah, typically. And it comes right. up in a conversation right. like, hey, just so you understand, you know, I'm not prepared to do karaoke. So if you have a cousin or somebody who's like, this amazing singer that's just not going to go. No, we don't want that. Oh, we don't right. want that. Yeah, please. Oh my God, don't let anybody. And by sing. the way, right. One of the things I say very adamantly is, you are hiring me and my services and my equipment, but you are not renting any of my gear. What that means is, I say who gets the microphone because of who you say gets the microphone. So if you say Brian, Howie, and Chris get the mic then that's it. I don't care who they are. They're not coming up afterwards going, hey man, I want to say something. No, it's not going to happen. But what's happened at quite a few weddings, and it famously happened last year where the bride's mother said, my niece has a song on Spotify. Is there any way you could play it and she could sing it as a gift to the bride and groom? And I'm like, I'm so sorry. 
I've only brought speaking microphones tonight. Yes. I have an SM58 speaking mic, and I have an AudioTech 3000 fourth gen speaking mic. I didn't think this would come up. She goes, oh, you can't sing in those? I go, you can. But the frequency levels will drop on the vocal. It will sound terrible, and she will not sound good. Right. Now, no one's, it. Ever, no one's ever tested me on this, <laughs> but if they ever do, I promise you. <laughs> I will simply kill the mids, hand yeah. them the mic after I say, hey, everybody, uh, Brian S. Red, famous singer, is here to sing. Hand them the mic, kill the mids, and then watch the fun. But I've told this at five different weddings where people have been like, bro, uh, my girlfriend's a singer. I'm like, yeah. I brought speaking mics. And if it's a professional <laughs> yeah. singer, they even buy it because they look at you like, seriously? I'm like, it's an SM58. It's the speaking <laughs> one. It doesn't have the mid frequencies. You know how you need the mids? And they all have to say the same thing. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no. Thank you so much for telling me. I'm like, hey, how many watts does the speaker? Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I tell you, it's been driving me nuts for 24 hours, Jay. I was thinking maybe you want to call them dialogue microphones. That sounds better. <laughs> singing but, mics I call doesn't them sound speaking, technical enough. Speaking or singing. They're dialogue yeah, microphones. Yeah. They're not. They're not vocal singing microphones. That sounds even better. These yeah, are dialogue, yeah. not the vocal series. I have those. But I didn't bring them because I wasn't planning on anyone singing. And if you're going to sing, you need to present the best possible range. <laughs> I was just thinking of something more technical to say. But yeah, it's a yeah dialogue the frequency mic. it just yeah. the frequencies drop. It's the 1400 hertz <laughs> to 300 hertz, and it's gone on these mics. I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah at first, if you I had known, them, oh, I'm sorry, this is a speech mic. Is the first? Yeah, that's thing yeah. This is, is a speaking good. mic, speech and mic. they bought it. Yeah. Everyone yeah. buys it. Yeah. But yeah. here's the thing. It sounds terrible to say, and we all know as DJs, like, you know, the FC talking about it, but it, a common person on the street, they're not offended. Because if I say, you're not singing, that's a no. Right. I just gave them an impossible mountain to climb over mm -hmm. to do what they want to do and sound good. Because if you think you can sing at a wedding, you obviously want it to sound good. And if the DJ says, this mic won't sound good, it's a speaking mic, dialogue mic, not a singing mic mm -hmm. they're gonna in their head go oh man that last thing i want oh you mean you don't have effects you don't have auto tune on there you mean you can't no sorry i have no talent on this mic whatsoever <laughs> this is a talentless mic <laughs> right in the brochure talent zero it's I have talent mics everything you, know, you say will be in b flat no matter what yeah, it doesn't matter. It. it doesn't matter. But it's so funny to me because like I did a wedding and genuinely I did a wedding two Novembers ago. November tw yeah, November 2020. Um and the bride, the groom, the father of the bride, and the mother of the bride all gave me wave files of songs they wanted me to play for first dance, father, daughter, mother, son and the bridal processional they're all musicians in fact the bride made it to the top 10 on american idol like this was legit and yeah. even they i was like you know what this system is so not set up for that like look at the board i don't have the eqs and they're all professionals so they're like oh wow all you have is just three i'm like yeah, yeah so if you want to send me the, a yeah. wave file you want to send me an MP3? That's cool, but don't show up that night and think it's time to perform. I'm bringing a DJ mixer, not an audio mixer. In fact, and my I system will not even play the song "Black Horse and a Cherry Tree" because it's it's a uh, it's from Japan and it it doesn't recognize English vocals. Are there is there Sorry. DRM on that? Because if there's DRM, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> okay. which which style video is this NHCS or yeah. is it because is I it a PAL wave? wave? I PAL waves don't can't play PAL waves. No. In TSC yeah. wave only. No but PAL Here's wave. the beauty of it. By the time they figure it out, I'm really kind of always hoping by the time they find out, they realize that <laughs> what I did to them was for the betterment of the client. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know this this will sound insane to most people. I like want most of the things that you say. Yeah. Truly. Or White Claw. I <laughs> want everyone at the event to have a great time. But you know mm -hmm. who I'm working for? The bride and groom. Right. I'm not working for the bride's mom. I'm not working for yeah. the groom's sister. 
I work for the bride and groom. I know DJs that look at that and go, that's not true. You're working for everyone. I'm like, no, I'm there to assure everyone has a great time. But trust me, when the smoke clears and we all walk away at the end of the night, which is usually between 7 and 7.30, because that's when the event ends. It starts at 5, ends at 7.30. I know the bride and groom will get me another gig. I know the bride and groom will write my review. I know the bride and groom will send me a tip. I know the bride and groom will think of me kindly. The rest of the people will go, we had a good time, and they walk away. They don't even know my name. But it's the bride and groom that I work for, and it's the bride and groom that I've assured I'm going to do the best possible job I can and make their night as memorable and regret free as I can to the point where they say I would have changed nothing. Well, also back to your point and Brian's point about making friends with the wedding party itself. Think about it. They're the same age as the people getting married. Typically chances are are. a, a a few, a few of them are engaged or thinking about getting married you're you've just auditioned for them right i don't oh, do, I, I don't do bridal shows but if i did a bridal show for those of you watching this that do bridal shows my advice to you is this instead of showing up with your gear and a bunch of lights and pamphlets and look at us we're cool we wear the same outfit why don't you call four of your ex brides mm. offer them 100 200 bucks and ask them if they'd be willing to come down for three hours on a sunday and sit at the convention center with you and then let them sell you because you know who's going to buy from a bride another bride did you just come up with this did did this just dawn on you no 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 this is i've had this in my head forever that like if i had to do and i said to my wife i go if i had oh yeah i've mentioned it before if i had to do a wedding show if somebody said yeah yeah, brand entertainment's got to do a bridal show. I'd call three of my ex clients and say, "Hey, I'll pay you this much money. Do you mind coming by and just telling brides the truth?" Because brides <laughs> speak uh, the same language as brides. Right. Nobody's selling you if they've had mm-hmm. a good time. That's not a sale. That's a statement. Mm-hmm. It's a testament. It's a, you know, factual account of what happened that would be very interesting if they had like t-shirts on that said kelly wedding and put the date on there <laughs> and you know you're, over here is but is, who are you gonna um, listen Brittany. to really? you want to hear me no, it'll be interesting. My... it's like who are these people with these t-shirts oh these are former clients oh, they, these are tell you how clients. awesome i am who do you want to talk to do you want to yeah. talk to me who's going to take your money or do you want to talk to the people that paid me their money and how they feel now a year or two or three later i'll tell mm-hmm. you right now i'd certainly trust somebody even if they're getting paid I'd certainly, if I could speak the right language, you know, mm-hmm. Brian, if you're going to have some work done in your house and you're going to call Howie, the con- you know contractor, and you say like, hey, you got any references? And you call somebody and it sounds like Howie's sister who's like, oh, Howie's the best. He's the greatest, this and that. Versus if you can go swing by a job somewhere and see a guy's house and be like, who did the work? Howie. You know what? Dude showed up every day at 6 a.m. It's always easier to have someone sell you than to sell yourself. I believe that. And that's I, what yeah. I love about having an agency. It's just, you know, it makes it easy. But mm-hmm. No, I, I wasn't kidding about the shirts. I wasn't trying to. I think that and I'm tell a not joke. Either, I, I, I think, think that would be, would be cool. Yeah. Brand yeah. entertainment the, client. Yeah. Jay's bride from this wedding. Right. They can even walk around. Well, who the hell is Jay? Oh, well, let me tell you about Jay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm oh, just because, saying. If, if yeah. you're doing wedding shows, don't have your friend who's been a DJ for six years or five months or two weeks try to explain to a bride and groom what's going on. Well, Let we read the crowd. Bride. <laughs> yeah, we read the crowd. We're only going to read what the crowd. they here. Go a lot of songs. I'm still sticking on this one. I had to have this conversation yesterday with a bride for this Saturday. She's like, and I don't want this. I don't. And she named off all the, you know. Camila Cabrillo and this one and this, like all these new artists. I love Destiny's Child. I can't stand Beyonce. I'm like, wow, you had to bring this on me like four days out. Okay, cool. So I can play Destiny's Child. I can't play Crazy in Love. I got right. you. And then she goes, and the Cardi B thing. And I go, time out. I said, I don't know which direction you're going, but I got a good idea. But I'm just telling you right now, don't ruin my track record. What's that mean? I said, I have yet to play WAP in public. Please tell me you're not the bride that's going to ruin that track record. She goes, oh, my God, I was going to say, I hope you don't play it. I'm like, I have never played it. And again, it's that it's that kind of 
mm-hmm. little thing between us now where she sent an email today. She's like, I can't wait to meet you on Saturday. I've talked to her on the phone once. I've emailed her probably 10 times. Yeah. But email is words. She's mm-hmm. physically spoken to me on Sunday, on Easter mm-hmm. Sunday. And then yesterday we had a quick little like email text thing and she's thrilled because when she said we like 90s alt i'm like please tell and i this is my response please tell me i can play some death cab and she's like oh my god we love death cab and i'm like i win don't ever say to your client what do you mean don't ever say to your client i don't know if that'll fit be excited be th- my mm-hmm. the, the groom for sunday for saturday's Text me last night. He goes, we're thinking of doing David Bowie Heroes for the recessional. I'm like, I love that song. I know exactly where to start mm-hmm. it. I've never played it at a wedding for a recessional. This will be perfect. You know, the, mm-hmm. the natives are getting restless. They keep trying to turn their cameras on here in the room. So we should probably are we, wrap uh, up. Geez, it's already 8 o'clock. Jeez. It's, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, could, I could talk to you all Where'd day. Where'd that hour go? But it's in my contract that I won't do that. So. No, I know. Yeah, it anyway. was. Thanks so much. I hope you guys got something out of this. I hope we threw something. We dropped out there. a lot of nuggets. A, a little nugget, a oh, little yeah. nugget even is is yeah. better than I think nothing. a few got so, dropped. I'll be honest. Sure, being honest. So if you learn, if something we said resonated, if you could please put that in the Send comments. Money. Know what it was. PO box BSR five twelve. I why call it's enough of that. Yeah, or what? We'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Stay well, Good night, everybody. everybody. Good night.